And let it tee up. Surprise, that's not a good shot. Yeah. Hey everybody, I'm Fawn and this is Lori and we're about to get started on our Friday 15. I'll start in just a few minutes and have Lori introduce herself, but while we're waiting for folks to log on, we're running a very important poll today. We want to know specifically, do you believe, and this is a yes, no poll, do you believe it's a fashion crime to wear white pants after Labor Day? No, we're not asking for a friend. We want to know, and it's critical. We got to know by Tuesday so I can know whether or not I can continue my white pant uniform for another month or two. My husband Tom says that there is no such rule, and my mom says that there is. So that's the big question. Okay, so let's start by having Lori introduce herself and tell us a little bit more about which company she's with. Hi, so I'm Lori McMortgage, because nobody can say McCagrin, <laughs> and I'm with Union Home Mortgage. So I run the North Texas area. I have a branch in Frisco. We're also in Keller and McKinney, and are always looking for good people who just happen to do mortgages. So if you're looking for a great company, call me. <laughs> okay, that's fantastic. And I'm Fawn Doster. I own the Doster Law Group. This is my Friday 15. If you're wondering what in the heck you've tuned into, but it's very interesting, so you're just still staying on board, yay you. We talk about legal topics and topics related to title and real estate law every Friday, and we try to keep it at 15 minutes once we get rolling here. So it's about 1.30, and we're about to get started. I want to start by telling you I'm a licensed Texas attorney. I'm not licensed in any other state. I'm not board certified. This is not intended to be specific legal advice or underwriting advice. This is just <laughs> informational only. So we're going to go ahead and get started. And the topic today is surprise. It's litigation. <laughs> That's not always a good surprise. But some of the things that we, and of course my tabs always give me trouble. Uh, it's just the way it goes. So let's see if that tells it to. Nope. This is what happens sometimes. Surprise! It's technical difficulties. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> Although it's never a surprise for us. It's always technical. There it goes. Okay, here we are. So surprise! It's litigation. We'll start all over. I'm just teasing. Okay, so. When you're involved in litigation and you're trying to decide whether or not to go ahead and start looking at houses and maybe you're going to make an offer, maybe you're not, it has to enter into your equation of whether or not you're going to qualify and how this is all going to be impacted. So the first thing is a lot of people come in the office and they're like, we're in litigation uh, from the law office side of the house. And I think, okay, are you in litigation? Are you at the number one phase where it's actually just a threat of a lawsuit? Maybe you got into an argument with somebody at the uh, little kid's ball field and uh, you were a naughty parent or they were. And so they're like, we're going to sue you and you're we're going to sue you. And it's on like Donkey Kong. Or maybe you've gotten something more significant. So we're going to talk about what that constitutes in just a minute. Second, maybe you're actually in a lawsuit. And we'll talk about that in a minute. And the third one is judgment, not judgment day, but judgment. All right. So threat of a lawsuit. This is exactly what we see most frequently. People think they're in litigation, but they're not. They are in the process of talking about litigation. A lot of people come in and they're like, oh, Vaughn, I got to sue somebody and uh, we're really upset about this. And then when we get to the actual issue and it's uh, um, an argument over a couple of thousand dollars, I'm going to charge them a couple of thousand dollars just to argue over it. So mostly we dissuade people from suing over a couple thousand dollars but that doesn't stop people from getting ugly with each other you know i'm gonna sue your ass and i'm gonna sue you and i'll sue you in court famous last words um more frequently we see somebody come in with a demand letter some lawyer has um been paid probably a thousand bucks to write a nasty gram we call it and those usually look very similar and it's a lot of huffing and puffing um and then at the end here's the teeth we're going to sue you in 30 days if you don't do X, Y, and Z. So the threat of a lawsuit sometimes gets people going and they think that they're in litigation, but they're not. And in a minute, Lori's going to tell you about whether the threat of litigation is critical to her analysis or whether it's actually the next topic we talk about, number two, a lawsuit. My guess is she's going to be really more worried about lawsuits. Lawsuits mean that a cause of action has been filed. And this gives you an example of a federal district court type of a case. So um, we see those a lot in bankruptcies and things, but there's a plaintiff, there's a defendant, 
And if you're the defendant, you'll know because you've been served with a lawsuit. And if you're the plaintiff, you'll know because you've written a check already to some lawyer. So that's what it looks like typically, very similar. And the third type of we're in litigation is a judgment. You're no longer in litigation. Somebody's got a judgment. That means that the court or a jury has decided, here's how this is going to work out. Or you've come to an agreed order, similar to a judgment. So that means that it's been taken care of and resolved, and now there's just some debt out there or obligation. And again, it's going to matter if you're the plaintiff or the defendant. We'll talk through that. So in our analysis, and so I'm looking at this from a lawyer's analysis, and Laura will look at this from the lender's analysis. Here's what the big question is. They come in and they ask Lori, can I still purchase property during a lawsuit? And the answer is always, it depends. My analysis as their lawyer is gonna be, well, what's the subject of the suit? Who's the plaintiff or defendant? What's the exposure? And then the lender's perspective is gonna be even more interesting. So let's start with the subject of the suit and go through some ideas there. If you're purchasing property and you have a, um, Lawsuit involving post-divorce enforcement. That means somebody's being naughty after a divorce. They're not behaving in all likelihood. They're not doing what they should do, signing a deed or maybe paying something or refinancing. So if you're purchasing a property and there's a post-divorce enforcement suit, it may not enter into any of our concerns, meaning the title side or the lender side, but I'll let Lori address that in a minute. If you're facing a non-compete lawsuit, that's a whole different type of an animal. Or an FED, um, uh, which is a forcible entry and detainer or an eviction suit. While it might not matter to Lori's numbers, it would probably matter to your qualifying. So we'll talk through that in just a minute. If you're about to be evicted from your apartment, that may enter into her equation. The biggest component of my analysis when they come in from the title side and the lawyer side is, are you the plaintiff or the defendant? Because if you're purchasing property while you're a plaintiff, who cares? Sky's the limit. Buy whatever you want is what I'm going to tell them. <laughs> if you're the defendant, it depends a heck of a lot on a bunch of factors. But the answer is it's probably not going to happen for you. So what is your exposure? And if you're the purchaser again, just buy whatever you want. Because if you're the purchaser and there's no chance of a counterclaim, who cares? But if you're the defendant, your exposure is going to matter big time. So I'm going to let Lori take the next one and talk about what the underwriter looks for specifically if you're purchasing property. Right, so this is one of the first questions we're gonna ask um, in the pre-qualification process. Mm -hmm. So in addition to asking income and pulling credit and looking at bank statements, there's a few other questions that we ask and one of them is, are you party to a lawsuit? Mm -hmm. And so depending on your answer, we can move forward or not. Mm -hmm. um, so if you are the plaintiff, again, mm -hmm. it's usually no big deal unless there's that risk of countersuit. Um, right. if, if you lose the suit, you're not harmed in any way. It doesn't affect your ability to repay the loan. Um, it doesn't, uh, there's not an impending lien against the collateral that we would have as security for the loan. So no big deal. We just typically ask for a letter from your attorney mm -hmm. confirming, you know, what's the risk standpoint so that we yeah. can show that in the file. But as the defendant, that's where it kind of gets sticky. So um, what we see most commonly in the loan process First of all, a lot of people don't apply for a home loan while they're in the middle of a lawsuit. So I think mm -hmm. in 25 years that I've been doing this, I might have had five or 10 answer yes mm -hmm. to this question. So it's been two things. Um, they have had an insurance dispute, mm -hmm. maybe a car a car accident, or um, usually child support. <laughs> yep. so. What about child custody? What would you think about if somebody came in and they're in the midst of a child custody battle with their ex? What do you think about in that situation? So it would end up, um, it would end up being, you know, if they gain or lose custody, then how does that impact child support? Because okay. child support is going to be one of those things that we would end up including um, as a liability or mm -hmm. expense, something that would affect their debt to income ratio or their ability to repay. Mm -hmm. So if they're going to lose custody, and then that's going to trigger them paying child support, mm -hmm. we're not going to want to move forward with the loan application because mm -hmm. we can't really determine 
if they're going to qualify. Um, I have had one situation where it was really on the tail end. Mm -hmm. And so they were able to go ahead and write a contract with a long enough closing date because a court date had been set. We kind of had an idea of what Mm -hmm. all the numbers were going to be. So we moved forward with the loan process with the contingency that this is going to be filed Mm -hmm. as we have it. And then once we got proof of that, we were able to finish up. So mm-hmm. similar to we are going to sell our home, it's contingent on right. getting a contract for X amount of dollars. Gotcha. So if you're the defendant, the best plan of action from what Lori's telling us is to let them know at the very beginning. Be honest, have full disclosure, total transparency, because it will work out better that you don't waste your time gathering a whole bunch of receipts and income tax returns and putting a contract in on a house that you can't buy because you can't get a loan. Um, So it really does matter. These things matter. Be transparent. So let's talk about the seller. Can I still sell during a lawsuit? Again, the answer is just like any good mom in the situation is, (laughs) it depends. So again, we're going to look at those four same issues, in my opinion. We're going to look at subject of the suit. We're going to look at the plaintiff or the defendant, the exposure, and the title company's angle. Lenders don't care if the seller is in a problem but the title company is going to care. So let's start with the subject of the suit. You're selling the property and you have a post-divorce enforcement lawsuit pending. Again, you wanna ask yourself, am I the plaintiff or the defendant? And how is this gonna impact the overall analysis of this situation? Is this litigation going to be impacted by the the actual sale? Uh, Is there non-competes lawsuit pending or an FED? Uh, and an FED would be unlikely if you were selling, but maybe you have multiple properties and you're living in a property that you're renting. So those things would come into play. And certainly, let me go back to that one. Certainly, if I'm the title company and I see that there's an FED, of, and, uh, which is an eviction, pending against you, and we're waiting on the outcome for some, um, not just the eviction, but also for damage to the property, I'm going to suggest to my underwriter, the title underwriter, that we push pause. Because we want to make sure that those proceeds get directed to the right place. And of course, are you the plaintiff or the defendant when you're selling? Again, if you're the plaintiff, sky's the limit, sell on, sister. If you're the defendant, it's going to depend on all those other factors that we've talked about, like exposure. If you're the plaintiff, you're going to be able to sell whatever you want. If you're the defendant, you'll probably have to tap the brakes if there's a financial obligation in the mix. So back to this analysis of child custody. If the title company you know, looks at you as the seller and says, hey, you've got this post-divorce enforcement action going, um, looks like you're trying to get your child back. Uh, if that's the extent of that, then the title company is not going to be so interested in that. All of this is going to be on, reviewed on a case-by-case basis. So what does the title company think? It's going to be the analysis that we just talked about. Plaintiff, we don't care. Defendant. The title company is likely to care. And so I'm going to look at things like if I tell the underwriter for my title side, hey, Bob, the defendant seller, has an insurance, an E&O policy, and this is really just a suit against his company, and they have plenty of assets to defend themselves on a $5,000 stupid suit, um, and they have E&O policy uh, insurance, that's probably going to be fine. But um, we have to look at each thing on a case-by-case basis. Here's the last one I want to talk about, and that's called a Liz Pendants. This is the big kahuna. This is like when you come out of a restaurant and you find the boot on your car, on your tire. You are going nowhere, sister. That means that the puts the world on notice. Liz Pendants is a, is a Latin expression that puts the public on notice of a pending legal action on this property, which is the subject of the transaction. Okay. Yeah, so title is definitely at stake. It's a no-go. It's a red flag. It's, it's going to be your obstacle. It's called the big freeze. So that about summarizes everything that we can talk about in terms of what to do if you face the surprise. It's litigation. And I want to thank everybody at Doster Law Group for helping me put this together. These presentations, even though they only last 15 minutes, take a little bit of extra work. So special thanks to Carly for pulling us out of the uh, nightmare that I put myself into technology-wise this morning. Ashley always works on the words. Madison worked on specifically on curing a couple of um, typographical errors. And uh, Biscuit was amazing. Biscuit was super helpful last night. And thank you to Christine, Monique, and Tyreek as well. And Lori, thank you for making time on the way out of town on your vacation (laughs) to stop in and 
address the lender side of what to do if you find yourself in litigation. All right, any other questions we have from the audience? Let's see if we've got anything. So I have a really quick question. Okay. So just thinking about our real estate professional friends, mm -hmm. you know, if they're talking to someone about a listing, is this something they should have as a routine question? Great question, Lori. Yes. We should say that to agents out there. If there's an agent out there and you feel like you're in a situation ever where this could be a possibility, so I'm just going to say be preemptive and ask in advance. Get awkward. <laughs> ask about whether or not they're in litigation if they're the seller and you are the listing agent. If they're the buyer and they, you think they might have fibbed to Lori or someone else in the lending uh, side of things, then ask the hard questions. You know, if you're with them when they get served, you know, <laughs> you know. This is a little bit like seeing two sets of shoes and then only putting one person on the contract as the seller. If you think there's two people in the property, you probably are wondering, and you should be wondering, if there's two sellers or if one of them is gone because they passed. So just like that, in this situation, if you're the agent, you should always ask the questions. And if you are the party, some of the questions that we came up with in advance, thank you, Carly, would be to ask, are you aware of any unpaid debts, mortgages? HOA, credit card debts, construction taxes, those types of things if you're the seller that might impact your ability to reach the closing table or reach into your pocket at the closing table because it might be no problem at all. We're just going to pay it at the table. We'll get a payoff, especially if we've reached stage three, judgment. So if that's the case, let us start working on getting you a payoff sooner rather than later. And if you think you're going to try and negotiate with the person that's holding the judgment, well, good luck with that. But if you think you are, you're going to have to hire outside counsel real fast and get that all teed up so that we can make the closing do like this. Because we don't want the buyer that you're in contract with to have to sit there and wait. They're lo losing their rate all the time. Their lock is getting ready to expire. Mm -hmm. Crises are happening on their end. And if you're the seller and you knew about this and you're causing it, not just shame on you, you're probably going to write a check to the buyer. So... If you've ever filed for divorce or bankruptcy and you have some, you know, hair on the file that you haven't thought about in a while and you're thinking, well, that bankruptcy was so long ago and just because I didn't make the last three payments, guess what? It doesn't go away and neither do income taxes. So if you have some unpaid taxes you're worried about, go ahead and tee that up so that we can start working on it. And if you have to hire a lawyer, you'll have time to do it. And if you're currently in a lawsuit, for goodness sakes, Tell us, <laughs> tell Lori, tell the title company, because we may be prioritizing files and trying to figure out what to work on. And if your deal is not really going to happen because it's absolutely a no-go, there's a list pendants on the property and you're arguing over this piece of property, let us know. Anyway, I'm Fawn Doster with the Doster Law Group. We appreciate you coming in. And thank you to Lori again for taking time out of her vacation to come over and visit with us about this. Y'all have a fantastic day. Hi, I'm Lori McMortgage, and I help people buy homes when they don't have the cash to pay for it. If it's your first home, your next home, or your rental home, my team and I will make sure you have the right financing in place and the process is smooth and easy. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the video, and please reach out to us at the information provided. We can't wait to talk to you.